This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. A snow petrel passed a group of penguins on an iceberg. Black and white pintado petrels with a fulmar petrel. And a tiny storm petrel the size of a sparrow. And above the much bigger giant petrel. Dozens of species of petrel which roam the oceans worldwide. But they must come ashore to breed. But where? These are fairly common petrels, but far from here is a beautiful small petrel whose story is like none other. It breeds high in the mountains of Madeira, a rugged island in the eastern Atlantic. Shepherds up there say their calls are like the suffering souls of the nuns, attacked in the past by pirates. For many visitors to Madeira, this is the place of fountains, flowers, sunshine and nature. They know nothing about the petrol in the mountains. But it's also down here, nearby in fact, but dead in fact. And it's in here somewhere amongst the familiar storks and ducks and the much rarer monk seal, the mystery bird. When a species is reduced to such low numbers, as with the endangered monk seal and a certain seabird, it may not be possible to turn a loser into a winner. But sometimes, somewhere, some dedicated people can make a difference. SOS, save our species. Yes, that's it, Zeno's petrel. Amongst the other seabirds is this species with an extraordinary backstory, linking land and sea, shepherds and fishermen, and an extraordinary family, the Zenos of Madeira. It's about discovery, extinction, and then rediscovery, back from the brink. Symbol of the sea, and its future perhaps. Near the museum in Funchal, the capital, there's lots of signs of life. Some hidden, some less so. Lizards are camouflaged. Monarch butterflies are definitely not. In the past, some were blown across the Atlantic and found food here amongst the famous gardens of Madeira. They also found the Xenos, whose link with the petrels out at sea and in the mountains was to become legendary. These days, Frank Zeno tells of monarchs being seen on the way to work at the museum. They found that the caterpillar's food plant in North America is milkweed, so they planted some in a public park to see what happened. Well, this did lots of action and lots of breeding. Monarchs are here to stay and will not abdicate, it seems. Frank Zeno says they still gather as if waiting to migrate, as they normally do from North America to Mexico, for the winter, but here they had nowhere to go, and that instinct seems to have been bred out as he's not seen such gatherings for many years. But of course his family's main interest in Madeira is just down the road, or high in those misty mountains, and where other Zeno's petrels may or may not still exist.
Frank needs to know and he checks with all who know the area. The NATO radar station was thought to be a major disturbance, but he was told not to challenge the authorities. So he didn't. He'd only lose. This is the unlikely home of his petrol, with its amazing double life. At night up here, and by day far out at sea, where its home is being changed by man in many ways. Not radar domes, but fishermen tourists and rubbish. A rare glimpse of the star of our story. Meanwhile, back in the park, it's business as usual. Butterflies sip nectar. Lizards chase ants, or each other. Many of the plants and trees are introduced, but native laurel forests have been protected in many places. It's a gardener's paradise with an excellent climate and the right water and soil, which are essential ingredients. Portuguese and thriving, with Funchal a modern city, and from out in the fertile countryside, often very rugged, comes a remarkable supply of fruit and vegetables, and fish too, an especially weird one, as we'll see. A farmer's market. Locals and tourists flock here for unbelievable choice. Apricots, bananas, cherries, mangroves, passion fruit, papayas. Plums, guavas, figs, tree tomatoes even. Finish off with a glass of Madeira dessert wine, made from four traditional types of fine grape. The older the Madeira, the higher the price in this Garden of Eden. And the locals like their food and also music and dance. The traditional to the new, farming to tourism. Much has changed in Madeira, some for the better, some less so, and that can affect the whole ecosystem, including surprisingly perhaps, Frank Zeno and his beloved petrol. A way to travel to the traditional house, or the Ritz, as was, established in 1905. A sliding chair on a steep street, very ladylike. Or take a Monte train. Now you can go by cable car, as thousands of tourists do, to visit the famous botanical gardens. Fishing has changed too, as just about everywhere else on our blue planet. Then and now, a meal in Madeira could have come to the kitchen from the deepest sea or the distant mountains, both home at different times to our endangered 
Zeno's petrol. Madeira is its only home on the planet, which it now shares with changing circumstances. At the Ritz of today, an Elvis song is a reminder of its lonely presence. Looking for a seabird kind of love. This is a team effort, oh. sound and pictures with Wind. his wife, very selective, and a great fan of seabirds. They're also known as globe spanners. Now most of them said they'd never heard of it until one shepherd recognized it and said it was the soul of the shepherds who died in the mountains and they were round peak to see down. So in April 69, my father, Jerry Moore, and myself visited the area and identified the calls heard by the shepherds and then employed the shepherds to search for possible breeding sites. In May 69, the shepherds first found burrows in what we now call the main ledge. And here's a view from the main ledge out. It's an impressive place. You can only get there by coming down uh, 40 uh, meters of, of uh, rope on an abseil. And then to get off, you either climb the rope, which I don't, some do, uh, or go on down another 40 meters and, and then get your way to the park and walk out. The shepherds and had been advised never to touch a bird or their eggs. I have actually spent a night on, on, a, on one of the main breeding ledge. We got lowered down there, it's 40 meters down to the ledge you have to abseil down. Then you tie up on the ledge, uh, which we did and spent the night there. It was fascinating because we were really in amongst the birds coming in and they'd waddle around past you. Uh, and then the next morning, another 40 meters down and onto the path and walk on up. So it was quite an adventure, I think. I think I'm the only person with the person I did it with to have done this and it was quite an exciting experience really. It so happened that my father came back that night and got a phone call first thing in the morning on the 16th of June to say that the birds had been caught and he rushed in the car to Ariedo and found uh, this horrendous sight of, of the men with a whole series of birds which Norwa had taken uh, eight adults and six eggs, and uh, something that was considered to be extinct, Norwa was about to take the lot. He managed to persuade him to release six of the birds, and he was going to replace some of the eggs, but it started raining, and so uh, that was given up. And the eggs ended up, uh, some for Norwa, one for the museum, which has subsequently been stolen, it was replaced by a chicken's egg, and we have one here. Um, when, the, when we discovered there were obviously very few breeding pairs, and, and rats appeared to be the primary cause, in 92 we found cats, uh, an intense program of, of uh, poisoning rats with the help of ICI at the time, and then Zeneca, uh, and then various other entities, including um, RSBB uh, and even the, the Portuguese uh, military when they built the radar they helped us finance the, the wardening up there uh, until the park took over the, the situation and the population was gradually on the increase and so much so that in 2010 we had 
38 juveniles. And these are data loggers that uh, we put on and they've got a little, just here, got a little light sensor. And if you know your start point, <coughs> and these measure dawn, maximum light, which one assumes to be midday, and then dusk. Um, with that, in the right computer, you can actually navigate to an inaccurate, slightly inaccurate way. You're right within probably 150K. But if you're going from here to South America, if you're 150K up or down, it really doesn't matter. What you need is, is to know the direction that the birds are going. And, and that's what we did. But huge fires. Uh, took over and 37 of them were burnt. The vegetation will mostly recover. But will the dwindling petrels unique to this island of Madeira? There may be other Zeno's petrels nesting somewhere else in those high rugged mountains where none of the intrepid walkers go, and certainly not at night when the lovelorn petrels may be sounding like the suffering souls of nuns trapped in the valley below. The much visited botanical gardens have suffered, but many tourists still come from all over the world and can enjoy the mountainous scenery so close to a productive sea. Or is it? The walkers in the mountains descend by bus to a very different scene, really the main home of Zeno's petrol in all its vastness, the Atlantic Ocean and beyond. The tourists now walk to the other world, the sea, which covers some 70% of the planet. In the mid-19th century, Madeira began to acquire a name as a desirable tourist destination somewhere one could relax, enjoy a mild climate, and it became a popular place for wealthy people from the north of Europe to spend the winter. Ecotourism is the new version. And there's always the chance of dolphins or even a whale down there. Today we still know so little about that world that's crucial to the health of the planet. This ship from the Mediterranean is trying to help and marine mammals are of special interest because what happens to them in the fish food chain could also happen to us. Plankton are eaten by small fish, then by birds like Zeno's petrels, for example, on up to monk seals, dolphins and whales. Now they're being found, more and more, containing plastics, from tiny particles to complete plastic bags and other bigger items, mistaken by the eater to be food. Well, how wrong can you be? Maybe this fisherman is trying to help too, though his mates may dislike the competition for fish. That's why it's become so rare. They're all in this together. Such diversity from octopus, to crab, and even he's diverse, carrying a couple of anemones. Man too is very diverse in the ways he uses the sea. Sport fishing is very popular worldwide, but these days fish are returned with tags, so at least a bit more may be learned about their lives rather than their deaths. From a few sport fishermen to a cruise ship full of thousands of people. David and Goliath, a local fisherman 
to a very tall floating hotel. The passengers consume a lot of resources and create a lot of waste. Recently a big cruise company was fined heavily for secretly dumping waste in the sea. And that's yet another threat to that other secret world. And now briefly to a very different place, not far from the main island of Madeira. We're heading for a rather special group of islands called the Desertas. Also leaving are the fishing boats heading for the open sea where they intend to catch a special fish, black as the night and down deep in the darkness. And from March to October, the Zeno's petrels fly inland in the dark too to try and nest on those sheer cliffs. Frank Zeno says they used to fish with hook and line, which could end in the death of that black fish. And maybe in the past, gulls were a threat at the lower levels, and so the Zeno's petrels were pushed up into the mountains where they were killed by rats and cats introduced by man. <laughs> Off the Desertus Islands, a whale is spotted. There she blows. In the past, the unenlightened past, there was more killing, big industry, big whales. And it hasn't been too good for monk seals either who not only have been seen as competition by fishermen and killed, but their breeding caves have been increasingly disturbed by divers and tourist boats. But here eventually they're protected and there's always a chance of seeing one. In fact, there's been one individual that comes to welcome human visitors. This traditional yacht brings visitors for the day, for lunch. Look at me, no? I like forever, I like forever. You know? Thank you, sir. Plus a visit to the research station where scientists keep a careful eye on the wildlife. There's even a unique desertus grande wolf spider that lives in a remote valley, hunting at night for prey as big as lizards. It's capable of delivering a painful and venomous bite to humans. Perhaps go for a swim instead. From a glimpse of a friendly monk seal to a glimpse of friendly dolphins. Out here you can see the difficulty of photographing a small bird like Zeno's petrel at sea, with heaving waves and from a lurching boat. This is some of the only footage of this very rare bird at sea. So it's a successful day out for the tourists. 
And what about the fishermen trying to catch the famous blackfish on Madeira? And the eco-tourists? Fishing has become industrialized. More and more is being taken from the sea by hook and line or huge nets and trawls. The blue planet is fading to black. And there it is, the famous black scabbard fish. Looks tasty, doesn't it? These are deep sea predators, as you might guess from their equipment. and tuna, big ones. They used to say there are plenty more fish in the sea. Well, today there aren't. Overfishing is a problem worldwide. This is turned into this, rather more appetizing looking and apparently Great when cooked with a banana, that other speciality of Madeira. Whether it's black scabbard fish or tuna in Madeira, or salmon or cod, prawns or scallops, man has always fished the world's seas. But it's now affecting everything out there. From top to bottom, bottom to top. There are now more losers than winners. And so where does that leave the little Zeno's petrol? almost an icon, a link between the sea and the land, all under threat, perhaps, from mankind. But one man, Frank Zeno, has tried to turn a loser into a winner in this daunting terrain. Let's hope he succeeds. Thank you.